Okay, we have a couple of uh, working group reports uh, to present to the council. Um, uh, there are four working groups of the council, and one of the requirements of them is to give a report to the full council at least once a year. And two, you're going to hear from two of them today. Uh, the first will be the data science working group, and uh, Trey Eidecker is a member of that working group and a uh, council member, and he's going to give the uh, report. Trey? Great. Thanks, Rudy. Yeah, so it's my pleasure as a member of that working group to uh, represent that working group and its activities for the past year and a half since it was formed. So uh, first of all, I don't think it'll become or act as a surprise to anyone in this room or in the audience here that data sciences are integral to genomics. And I, I think what's maybe more surprising to me, at least, as you think about this, is exactly how many points of intersection there are. So I think what helps this argument is, of course, that the human genome itself is perhaps the most fundamental form of biological information slash data. And we, of course, have constellation uh, or a, a constellation of databases hosted by NHGRI to host that reference, as well as, of course, all the common and rare variants that have been found uh, there as we look at populations of genomes. And then insofar as we're interested in linking those to disease, of course, that invokes a constellation of clinical databases. And I'd also point out that, that when you talk about you know, G as is, is, is the genotype and P as the phenotype, we also consider that we have these exquisitely uh, complex arrays of databases to hold molecular phenotypes. And so that's all of the other ohms uh, in my mind. Of course, more than that, but certainly when you're talking about epigenome, transcriptome, uh, a proteome, metabolome, and so on, you're talking about those molecular phenotypes and, and all of their data repositories. But to me, perhaps the most remarkable uh, point to make about data sciences as being integral to genomics is if you think about this classical quintessential one would say, uh, uh, mm -hmm. effort of genetics uh, over the years to link G to P, everything in that box to a first order is data sciences, whether you're talking about the statistical models of gene association, whether you're talking about calculation of genetic risk uh, scores, whether you're talking about the functional knowledge bases for annotating the gene functions you find in the genome as a way to translating those to, to, to phenotypes. Much, if not all of that, is really uh, a core data sciences activity. And then undergirding all of this is, of course, issues of, of uh, fair and equitable data access while maintaining patient privacy, orthogonal or complementary uh, issues of data visualization, and so on. So data sciences are important, and acknowledging that importance, uh, the NHGRI about a year and a half, almost two years ago now, instantiated what is, I guess, the newest of these, of these council subcommittees uh, called the Data Sciences Working Group or the Genomic Data Science Working Group. We meet just about every two months by WebEx since spring of 2017. And... Uh, Generally, let me first just talk about the general functions of that, of that working group as we've seen it. So generally, we, we meet on the sort of off cycle of, of council. And so certainly when council is not in session, issues related to data sciences arise. And it's our purview to, to provide advice on those issues uh, uh, on that ad hoc basis. But I think far beyond filling you know, holes in time is the second bullet point that we're really facilitating a deeper engagement beyond the day and a half of these council meetings um, of NHGRI with outside expertise on data sciences. And in that respect, we interface nicely to an internal uh, uh, NHGRI staff uh, 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 set of folks led by Valentina Di uh, Francesco, which is called the Data Sciences Focus Group. So that's the internal body and we're the external advisory committee is one way to think about it. Um, now, of course, data sciences are, are critical to NHGRI, but of course, they're also critical to many, if not all, of the other NIH institutes. And so we try to provide advice uh, when necessary on, on how particular issues of NHGRI are complementary or synergistic with issues of, of other institutes. And in thinking about all of this, of course, our, our mandate is pretty broad, and we, we sort of have defined three different broad areas where we can provide advice. One is, is data management and storage. Two is data usage, analysis, visualization, and so on. And then three is data policy. And uh, these issues of data management, usage, and policy have different considerations, whether you're talking about basic science or clinical practice, aka genomic medicine. 
Who are we? Who is the working group at present? So we are currently uh, nine members of outside experts. Some of us, uh, Trey and, and Mark, are current members of council, currently seated around the table. Uh, there are also uh, former members of council, some previous ad hoc and, and ad hoc members. It's been a particular pleasure to work with Nancy Cox over the past few uh, uh, meetings worth of, of the working group. And uh, also on those WebEx calls are NH, uh, GRI representatives, and I already mentioned Valentina, and of course, Eric, Carolyn, and Allison. So all of us are, are convening every two months on those WebEx calls. Okay, so, so what are some specific topics that, that we covered over the past uh, just about two years, year and a half? Uh, so the first issue we tackled was to deal with recommendations and maybe hone down some recommendations from the last NHGRI informatics workshop. So that last informatics workshop was now uh, two years ago in September 2016, although we started discussing it just a few months after that. And one of the sort of uh, pervasive suggestions we got from a number of outside uh, uh, opinions at that workshop was that, that with relation to algorithm and methods development, we needed to support more of it here, and it should be investigator initiated because you, you wanted to let many flowers bloom as opposed to, to you know, being more prescriptive about things. And so what, uh, after some discussion, um, what that led NHGRI to do is, as you heard from Eric's talk this morning, release three different program announcements, uh, which were investigator initiated announcements. Uh, if you understand the PAR designation, uh, and those are uh, the R21 mechanism, there's the R01 mechanism, and the SBIR mechanism, all PARs um, that, that really started with that informatics workshop, filtered through our work group, and then, and then um, were announced by Eric uh, this morning. The second uh, uh, point that we dealt with was uh, the formation and uh, eventual award or creation of NHGRI's genomic cloud platform, they call ANVIL, which stands for Analysis, Visualization, and Informatics Lab Space. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about the cloud and the reasons for putting genomes and other data in the cloud. One, one point that is often made, things always boil down to just a number of bits. So if you think about the number of bits you need to represent the genomic data, that's largely far in excess of the number of bits you need to represent tools. And so the idea, or at least one of the main, main reasons to have a cloud is that you ship the bits representing your tools to the much larger buckets of bits representing your data, as opposed to what most people do nowadays, which is you download massive amounts of data to your laptop and, and run your, your bespoke tools on those, on those data. And so that's just gotten on, uh, started, and we'll see how that develops over the next year. Moving right along, we also had a lot of discussion uh, about the importance of model organism databases in human genome interpretation, owing primarily to the huge benefit of evolution in, in sort of separating and distinguishing gene function. Um, NHGRI has long supported the MODS, so-called MODS, the model organism databases. Um, and one challenge that, that we helped NHGRI deal with was this challenge that as the mods had evolved, there's of course a lot of commonality between these various databases, but they were independent awards. And, and so there was a desire to sort of seek more uh, synergy as those different databases developed in the future. And that led to, to uh, creation of this additional uh, mechanism or award, I should say, called the Alliance of Genome Resources or the AGR. And this takes the specific activities that had been identified as most common to the MODS, to mouse genome database, Saccharomyces genome database, so on and so forth, and puts them under one roof, so to speak. You heard from Eric already this morning about, about some activities related to the genomic data sharing policy implementation, and we certainly advised on that. We also provided advice in this third bullet here on the Trans NIH Strategic Plan for Data Science, led by John Lorsch from NIGMS, so, so one of the interesting tenets of this NIH or, or trans NIH strategic plan is it, it's, it sort of bends data sciences into three categories, speaking broadly. They define databases, they define knowledge bases, and they define analysis tools. And when you think about how those three categories intersect 
NHGRI's programs, in many cases, it's very clear what's a knowledge base and what's a database and what's a tool. And in some cases, it's gray. And so we've, I think, uh, been of some utility to NHGRI in advising in specific cases how to bend these things and how to think about them uh, vis-a-vis this, this trans NIH strategic plan for data science. Okay, so that's a report on what we largely uh, uh, did for the past year, year and a half. Let me now turn to sort of the next uh, year to 18 months of, of activities as, as we see them. Now, of course, we'd love to hear feedback on what you think we should be thinking about. The first cluster of, of topics that we've, we plan to discuss on our calls uh, uh, coming to a WebEx near you soon um, are, are all related to helping NHGRI plan in this, in this strategic planning process called Vision 2020. You've heard a lot about already. Um, the, the first issue uh, really relates to what is data sciences mean to NHGRI? Can we help them better define that, especially vis-a-vis these different interests running across NIH institutes? What is data science in our space here and what is it not? Uh, and, and what are the areas of, of overlap where, where this institute can, can partner with other institutes in supporting data science? Those would be the three large categories uh, uh, to, to place data science's aspects in. And, and the hope here is by the end of this year, if not sooner, our committee would have, would have had some recommendations emerge for what does the kernel of data sciences mean to N- NHGRI? What is the part that we here own the most exclusively, and then what parts are, are certainly core interests but can be done in, in partnership with other institutes. That would be very useful. Um, the other two cross-cutting issues uh, on this slide, bullet points two and three, uh, are actually not within or, or are not between NIH institutes. They're within NHGRI itself. And so the first of those this uh, second bullet point here, relates to a, 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 a fact that may or may not be known to some of you, which is that if you look at the way NHGRI supports informatics in the institute currently, there are different programs, different uh, streams, they're called, and there is a standalone informatics program, funding stream, uh, that, that does support a lot of informatics, like the mods, like Anvil, I believe. But there's also a lot of informatics support and support for data sciences coming out of other funding streams and programs, certainly ENCODE, Centers for Common Disease Genomics, many other centers uh, and programs have their own columns of data sciences, data tools they're developing, in some cases databases they're developing, and, and those are currently separate. Now, there's lots of reasons to think that, or to argue that might be the best, the most optimal solution for supporting informatics. You can also think that that might not be the most optimal solution for supporting data sciences, and that's what we we might discuss in the coming 12 months. And the final point here about the cross-cutting nature of, of data sciences is between the council working groups themselves. So we're the data sciences working group. You're going to hear from a few other, at least one other data or a, a, a working group just after me, I believe. And there is also, of course, the genomic medicine working group. So if you think about what typically would you assign in your mind to data sciences, well, that would be things like data storage and analysis, which in you know, the, the usual serial uh, uh, a train of events follows things like data generation. But uh, I think many of us uh, have long appreciated the dangers of thinking about things uh, you know, sequentially like that, from generation of data to its storage and analysis. And the best point, of course, is this famous quote, I think, that's not uh, uh, surprising to many of you, uh, made 80 years ago now by Ronald Fisher, to consult a statistician after an experiment is finished is often merely to ask him to conduct a post-mortem examination. He can perhaps say what the experiment died of. So so we need to make sure that our working group moving forward is not simply downstream of the recommendations of other working groups in terms of what data are are being recommended, but that there's some interaction. And so that'll probably result in in a joint WebEx or some uh, interaction between working groups. At least that is our, our proposal. Um, final points uh, and, and particular areas of focus where we think we can make an impact in, in the next year. And again, we'd love to hear your, your thoughts. So uh, I think it's not lost upon any of us that outside of genomics, uh, and, uh, but in data sciences at large, writ large, 
there has been a tremendous impact of artificial intelligence and deep learning in particular in many, many, many different domains, uh, not least of which are things like you know, game playing, the Go champion uh, has, been, has been beat, you know, vanquished, the uh, you know, self-driving cars are on the horizon. Uh, if you type cat into Google Images, you get a thousand cats. Um, and that's impressive, uh, it turns out. Uh, so so uh, to what degree can we leverage these, <laughs> uh, these uh, really huge strides in machine learning for the G2P problem and, and actually many aspects of, of, of genome sciences? Um, that's happening. I, I, I don't want to suggest it's not. But we think there are and, and maybe lots of opportunities from a programmatic point of view for encouraging developments at that intersection. Um, there's been a lot of interest in, in, in discussing ways we can further foster education and training opportunities. Again, speaking of machine learning, many of our best data scientists in, in the US are currently not going to academic labs working on genome research. They're going to, yes, you guessed it, Google, IBM, Amazon, so on and so forth. Is that the way it should be? Or is there a better way? And is there something we can do to really uh, harness um, that power uh, uh, and, and those particular sets of expertises in, in our discipline here? Um, and then finally, uh, uh, last point that we've, we've seen on the horizon here is, is we probably would like to recommend another data science workshop since that, that one in fall of 2016. But given we just had that one in 2016, we thought that there might be more specific focus areas related to data sciences that one might, might invest effort in. And here are just a couple of suggestions, but these really are very ideas to kind of just you know, state the intention. One might uh, uh, contemplate a workshop in visualization methods. Um, it could be even a focused uh, uh, number of individuals brought together for that purpose. Community engagement in terms of data sharing and privacy. Uh, enabling specific groups with data and tools would be another uh, interesting workshop. But we're open to, to questions and suggestions. So with that, I will, I will stop and uh, turn the floor back over. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Trey. Questions? I, I'll start off. I just want to make a couple of comments. First of all, I'll go back a couple of slides to the quote by Fisher. I, if, if you had a beard, I swear that was a picture of you. But I am so honored, Eric. I just wanted to let you. Know. I, I I I can't possibly live that that up or down. But uh, right, but yeah. but thank you, I, thank you. Circular glasses. That's all you. Would oh yeah, that's right. I I, <laughs> so, I agree. Uh, so you can take this off now. Now that okay. I embarrassed you, but um, I want to make two comments. One one <laughs> one clarification. Oh, not clarification. I just wanted to point out you referred to this internal group that uh, this focus group. I just wanted to emphasize that that's uh, it's that's that's um, affiliated with the strategic planning process. It's not a it's not a long term ah, okay. internal group. But it, thanks but for the it, clarification. But, but it's important because it ties into what you were talking about in the yeah. last few bullet points. Exactly. Is that there is this apparatus that we have of an internal group that's part of the strategic planning process is to carry along the data science uh, uh, programmatic discussions and would be the one to help organize that workshop and so forth. But the other point I wanted to make, and it was one of your bullets, so you don't have to find the slide, um, because, but I really want to emphasize uh, is you pointed out the, how this working group is helping uh, me and helping the institute um, sort of find our place uh, within the NIH community. And I, I really want to emphasize that the, the entire, and, and Council's heard me talk about this multiple times, but I just want to emphasize the point here, that the entire NIH data science ecosystem is in a state of flux. I don't mean that to sound negative. I mean, it, it's, it's because it's for all these reasons that there's a lot of catch up, but it's just there's so much um, bubbling action going on around data science across the NIH. And so lots of things are happening including at the leadership level in terms of, and also in terms of initiatives and common fund and I mean all sorts of things even even in artificial intelligence where in director's report I talked about this major workshop that the NIH uh, director just hosted and how he's setting up a, a, a new working group of his advisory group on artificial intelligence so there's a lot going on and of course you know our institute is you know, is relevant, is if not more relevant. I mean, we're, we're right on the crosshairs of this because of genomic data. And, and, and many of us, myself, multiple people at the Institute get called into trans NIH committees to help move this along. 
So we, and so it's been a very helpful working group for me to, 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 to just get input to help us, just because a lot of times we're being asked to give input. So as to have this group to go to every couple of months and tell them the latest developments and get their input is, is extremely valuable. And part of it is we are going to have to define. I, I actually think NIH is going to get um, much more situated in data science and, and, and in all the different areas we're talking about. And then I think it will be important for NHGRI to define what we need to do because we can't do everything and much more is needed than what we could provide. But we're, I think this is going to be a very rapidly evolving area as NIH gets situated and then helping us define what we should be doing across that landscape. So I just want to really emphasize that point. Wes, I think, I don't know if it's for your committee or for the workshop, but I think it would be beneficial to have a glossary of data science terms, terms from inf informatics, bioinformatics, computational biology, all AI, machine learning, because I think there's a lot of confusion or, or they're used sometimes as synonyms, meaning different things. Well, and I've tried very hard not to define data science as part of my, my talk. That's the goal for the next 12 months. <laughs> but but um, great idea. Jeff? Yeah, thanks, Trey. I think there's a lot of excitement about the AI uh, concepts, and I know a lot of activities across the NIH. I don't know whether folks are um, uh, tuning in yet to the workforce issues there. You know, I think cr across society, a lot of discussion about who's going to be losing jobs or what's going to be happening with uh, self-driving cars and such. But I think uh, it probably ought to be on somebody's plate at the NIH to really be thinking about how, how it's going to impact how science is conducted in terms of the, the workforce issues. Trey, there's one quick question. Uh, in your last, uh, I think it was your last slide or close to the last slide, you talked about uh, your, your concept of, there it is, uh, visualization. You sort of brushed that, and I couldn't, wasn't clear what in what you had in mind relative to the exploration in that area. Yeah, and um, and maybe Valentina can comment here as well. But but this came out of um, among other places the workshop that just recently happened in January, which was I'm going to butcher the name of that workshop, the Variant Interpretation Workshop. Am I getting that wrong? Uh, sorry. Genome to phenotype. Uh, so, so some of us just attended a January workshop here, uh, where surprisingly uh, there were there was a huge discussion that happened organically around data visualization as a very separate but almost you know equally important issue to data analysis. And so that you know so so I think we'll we'll try to uh, uh, you know debrief from that set of recommendations, and that's going to get written up as well. I really don't yeah. have much Anything to else to add? add? No, it really, the idea came from this workshop that we had like three weeks ago. Um, so we are, we're going to explore what, if anything, we need to do um, to focus discussions on this particular topic. So happy to update you when, when we're ready. Aviv? On uh, kind of the, t for the two bullet points, both uh, leveraging advances and education and training, I want to put in a pitch for jamborees for events that are relatively low cost, but where you bring people together, you give them a data set and a set of challenge problems, and you ask them to start solving them together over a period of two to three days, and then they can go home and continue and so on. We've seen that both in institutional settings and in the HCA being a huge energizing force, and it, lets, it draws people into these problems, and it lets them then sustain their relationships, and it also helps you understand what the good problems are to really work on as a community right now. And the generation of the data set is something that NHGRI can really uh, energize its base of grantees who usually would be quite interested in engaging with all these, you know, AI slash machine learning uh, folks, um, because sometimes they have a hard time getting kind of to the next level. 
in the analytics. So you're suggesting that some of the data already being generated under some program could be or, nominated for such a jamboree, basically. Yeah, and the program might not be generating precisely those, but it would be quite willing to do that. I'm thinking, you know, ENCODE and SEXES and so on, where you have some room for maneuver, not necessarily humongous room for maneuver, but some where you have a big engine for data production. So it's a relatively small um, investment um, is one way in which this can be done. Yeah. These Good are point. really low cost investments and they and they give very big benefits. We've had discussions about that with other aspects of NIH, so I think that's a, a worthwhile thing to do. And I have zero vested interest in it. It's not something to get a grant from or something like that. It's just an observation. Okay, thank you very much, Trey. Let's do one more. Yeah. There's still like we have a couple hours to go.